continue our uh, journey into thinking about uh, different kind of clinical clinical profiles. So uh, Federico Frau is going to tell us about can language detect different clinical profiles in schizophrenia. Uh, it's a semi-automated analysis on Italian speaking patients. Um, go ahead and take it away when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Federico Frau, and uh, the topic of today's presentation is a semi-automated analysis that we conducted on a cohort of patients with, with uh, chronic schizophrenia. And uh, before we get to the actual analysis, I would like to introduce a little bit the topic of schizophrenia as a disease. And of course, I would like to uh, touch briefly the contribution of automated measures and automated analysis to the study of language in schizophrenia. So first of all, what is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a severe long-term mental disorder affecting almost 20 million people in the world, according to the 2019 report of the World Health Organization. And the clinical profile of schizophrenia includes a wide range of symptoms, for instance, positive symptoms, such as delusions, hallucinations, disorganizations, but also negative symptoms such as apathy, elogia, and also cognitive and sociocognitive dysfunctions. And language, of course, can be severely impaired in schizophrenia, and almost the 80% of patients show a linguistic or communicative impairment. In particular, the most obviously compromised linguistic level in schizophrenia is pragmatics, which is also the most widely investigated. But of course, we also have evidence of uh, impairment of other, um, affecting other linguistic levels, for instance, speech, but also grammar, semantics, and the uh, application of computational approaches to the study of language in schizophrenia is not certainly recent, since in the last 15 years, several studies have been published proposing results with potential clinical impact. And uh, two are the major areas of application. In particular, the uh, first one is the discrimination of patients with schizophrenia with respect to healthy controls or first degree relatives using speech characteristics, for instance. And the second one is the prediction of diagnostic outcomes, for instance, psychosis, in individuals at clinical risk in premorbid stages. And uh, in my opinion, the most relevant findings in these studies concern the accuracy of these linguistic approaches, especially when applied to differential diagnosis. And overall, all these studies contributed in emphasizing the role of language as a potential biomarker in schizophrenia. However, the uh, majority of these studies uh, mainly focus on specific linguistic domains, for instance, coherence, which has been uh, widely studied, for instance, using uh, latent semantic analysis or word embeddings, but also some specific lexical features have been investigated, in particular, emotional words, so words reflecting uh, content uh, of positive or negative emotions, and uh, another specific focus is the comparison between patients with schizophrenia and other conditions, for instance, bipolar disorder, mania, major depression. So what is lacking in this literature is, on the one hand, a more comprehensive approach to the study of language across multiple domains. And on the other hand, the application of these computational techniques to the study of different linguistic profiles within chronic patients, within chronic schizophrenia. And uh, schizophrenia is a chronic disease, is a long life condition. And patient with, uh, patients with chronic schizophrenia are different from one another, might show different profiles at the cognitive, functional, and clinical level. So we are confident that also language can be used to disentangle the complexity of chronic schizophrenia, and to use a metaphor, to unravel the forest of the complex clinical profile of chronic schizophrenia. So these are, these are the reasons behind our study, and in particular, the study had two major aims. The first one was to cluster patients using a comprehensive, multi-layered, and semi-automated linguistic analysis. And the second one was to compare patients on their cognitive, psychopathological, and functional outcome. So we hypothesized that, of course, profiles of 
chronic patients, patients with chronic schizophrenia can be derived from a complex array of linguistic features touching different linguistic domains. And of course that these uh, profiles can be associated to differences at the psychopathological and functional level. So now let's see the methods that we use uh, for our analysis, starting from our participants. We recruited 67 Italian speaking patients with chronic schizophrenia that were clinically and pharmacologically stabilized for at least three months. And uh, we assess patients for spontaneous speech, of course, using the interview task included in the assessment of pragmatic abilities and cognitive substrates tests. This uh, interview task is a semi-structured interview that touches uh, autobiographical topics. And then we assess patients for cognition using the box battery, psychopathology, of course, using the uh, PANS test, and finally daily functioning using the quality of life scale. As for our analysis, we selected nine linguistic measures from four different domains. And these domains are four domains that have been investigated in chronic schizophrenia. And previous studies highlighted evidence of linguistic impairment across these domains. In particular, we included fluency measures, so mean length of utterance, mean pose and gap duration, pose to word ratio, but also lexical richness variables, type of ratio, lexical frequency, and then the frequency of occurrence of personal pronouns, the frequency of occurrence of specific semantic classes, such as affective words, as I said, positive emotions, negative emotions, and also metacognitive words, namely words reflecting uh, cognitive processes. And then we extracted these linguistic measures, starting from our semi-structured interviews that provided us with speech samples that we initially transcribed using the CLAN software. And from these transcripts, we extracted the type token ratio and the lexical frequency values, so the token-based measures. And then we performed an automated computational analysis using the linguistic inquiry and word count software to obtain our measures concerning the frequency of affecting words, uh, metacognitive words, and personal pronouns. And finally, we analyze also the audio recordings using the Pratt software to obtain, of course, the measures concerning gap duration and pulse duration. And we defined uh, the uh, gaps as the silence that follows the interviewer's question and precedes the patient's answer. As for post duration, we considered both uh, intra utterance and inter utterance uh, post duration. And then we combined, of course, transcripts and audio recordings to obtain post word ratio and, of course, the mean length of utterance. As for the statistical analysis, we first reduced data dimensionality using a principal component analysis with variant max rotation. Then we performed a cluster analysis using a k means algorithm. And finally, we compared our resulting clusters uh, on uh, clinical, cognitive, and functional uh, measures. So now let's see the results. Starting from the PCA, as I said, we uh, use our nine linguistic measures to run the principal component analysis that identified four significant principal components. And in particular, the uh, lex lexical richness measures and some fluency variables loaded on the first principal component, whereas other fluency measures loaded on the second principal component, uh, the frequency of pronouns loaded on the third principal component, and finally, our selected semantic classes loaded exclusively on the fourth principal component. And consistently with previous studies, we use the scores obtained from these components to fit a k-means algorithm for our cluster analysis. And the cluster analysis identified an optimal two-cluster solution that was confirmed by the average silhouette width that you can see here in this plot, and was also validated using a linear discriminant analysis with a 94% accuracy. And here are uh, our two uh, clusters. Uh, the first cluster included 40, uh, 47 patients, and the second cluster included 20 patients. But how uh, these two clusters behave with respect to the principal components that we use for our cluster analysis and the underlying linguistic domains that were associated with the uh, principal components? Well, as you can see from the directions of the arrows, uh, 
the first cluster is associated with higher fluency, higher frequency of personal pronouns, and higher semantic classes, but uh, lower lexical richness, which means that the patients belonging to this cluster show longer utterances, shorter poses, higher occurrence of pronouns, but also higher occurrence of words expressing emotions, cognitive uh, mechanisms, but overall, their words are less various and more common. On the other hand, the second cluster is associated with lower fluency, lower frequency of pronouns and semantic classes, but lexical richness, which means that uh, the speech samples produced by these patients uh, include uh, shorter utterances, longer poses, uh, lower occurrence of pronouns, emotional words, uh, metacognitive words, but overall their words are more various and less common. And finally, we compared our clusters using independent sample t tests, uh, starting from demographic, clinical, and cognitive data, and we did not find any difference in these measures. However, we found a significant difference for the psychopathological level. And in particular, the patients in the first cluster showed lower positive, negative, and general symptoms compared to the patients in the second cluster. And also for the daily functioning, we found a significant difference. So patients in the first cluster showed higher quality of life, especially uh, concerning the interpersonal relations personal autonomy and the global score uh, of their uh, global daily functioning. And before we uh, get to the discussion, I would like to present two examples of our uh, analysis, just to uh, see the potentiality of our linguistic analysis. And in particular here, we have two excerpts that are of course, literal translation from the original Italian transcripts. And uh, uh, these two excerpts uh, are extracted from the interviews of one patient belonging to the first cluster and another patient belonging to the second cluster. The topic is the same, uh, the questions concern hobbies, books and readings, but the answers are quite different. And the differences can also be appreciated by looking at the individual data of the linguistic measures that we consider for our analysis. For instance, if we look at the mean length of utterance, we can see that the utterances produced by the patient in the first cluster are far more uh, longer, are longer compared to the very short utterances produced by the patient in the second cluster. And the uh, pause duration is shorter in the first cluster compared to the uh, pauses produced by the patient in the second cluster. And these are the uh, data concerning the lexical richness. We see that the patient in the first cluster produces and repeats uh, several times uh, the same words, which are also uh, quite common. For instance, read books, things. Whereas in the patient of the second cluster, we see a higher occurrence of words, which are less common. And we also can see a higher variety of words. And here, uh, concerning the selected semantic classes in the first cluster, we see higher occurrence of words concerning cognitive mechanisms, concerning uh, cognitive processes. For instance, reading, uh, remember, so, but also reflect, discover, think. Whereas uh, in the second cluster, we do not see any occurrence of this word. And also for the uh, emotional words, the uh, affective words, we see, uh, we see uh, that the uh, patient in the first cluster uses words that reflect positive emotions, nice, like, beautiful, happy. And again, in the patient of the second cluster, we don't see any words belonging to these selected semantic classes. So uh, we can also appreciate the difference if we look at the uh, psychopathological profile, we see that the patient belonging to the first cluster shows lower symptomatology compared to the patient belonging to the second cluster. And for the quality of life scale, we see that the patient of the first cluster exhibit higher daily functioning, higher scores reflecting also higher daily functioning compared to the patient of the second cluster. So how can we interpret this uh, data 
Well, uh, starting from a summary of our uh, analysis, we performed our uh, multi-layer comprehensive linguistic analysis that identified two different profiles of patients with chronic schizophrenia with two different linguistic profiles. And it is important to underline for this type of analysis that uh, each linguistic domain contributed to cluster definition. And this confirms our first hypothesis according to which profiles of chronic patients can be derived from a complex array of linguistic features that uh, touches different linguistic domain. And uh, as for the second hypothesis, we also found that uh, our linguistic profiles were strongly related to psychopathological differences. And if we take our first cluster as an example, we see that the patient belonging to this cluster showed lower symptomatology. Of course, this is consistent with previous studies that emphasize our relationship between language and symptoms in schizophrenia, and uh, especially uh, results coming from correlational studies that uh, focus on poses, for instance, millions of utterance and type of ratio. As for daily functioning, uh, similarly, we found that uh, the linguistic profiles were also effective in capturing differences at the functional level. And again, if we take our first cluster, we see that patients in this cluster showed not only lower symptomatology, but also higher quality of life. And again, this is consistent with uh, previous literature, and in particular with the very few studies that investigated the relationship between quality of life and language in schizophrenia, and studies that mostly focus on poverty of speech. But here, uh, in my opinion, it is important to uh, underline that it is not just a matter of poverty of speech, but also of quality of speech. So this is the uh, complete picture that we outlined. So we uh, use our linguistic features, linguistic measures to unravel the forest of chronic schizophrenia. And speech characteristics identified to uh, coherent linguistic profiles corresponding to profiles of chronic patients with uh, schizophrenia. So uh, to conclude, uh, this uh, study certainly uh, emphasized the importance of speech, speech and language. Uh, in the analysis of patients with chronic schizophrenia and uh, uh, underlying how speech characteristics are able to identify profiles of chronic patients that are different, both at the clinical and functional level. And especially if we consider language as a potential biomarker in schizophrenia, it is fundamental, in my opinion, to start from the building blocks of speech. And finally, uh, of course, this uh, analysis emphasized the effectiveness of computational approaches to the study of language in chronic schizophrenia. But uh, what implications and uh, future perspectives can be derived from this analysis? Uh, I would start by mentioning the uh, potentiality in the uh, in um, addressing, for instance, a uh, more target. Uh, treatment in patients with different linguistic profiles, and also the monitoring on functional and clinical outcomes in patients with chronic schizophrenia. Because it is important to uh, keep in mind that schizophrenia is a chronic disease, is a long life condition, as I said, and patients require a long life treatment, long life monitoring and assistance. And finally, uh, it is also important to mention the uh, potentiality in the application of these methods to the study of other populations, other non-psychiatric populations, for instance. So to conclude, uh, I would like to thank the uh, researchers and my supervisors uh, at the US uh, Pavia, starting from Professor Valentina Bambini, Dr. Luca Bischetti, and also the uh, clinical research unit from the San Rafael University in Milan, led by uh, Dr. Marta Buzia. And uh, thank you all for your attention. And I wait for your comments and feedbacks, and of course, 